The world has existed since 1506. But what if there was a new world that was so confoundingly complicated that only an unreasonably Herculean processing machine is capable of handling it? Such a world can be created, in Modpack Monstrosity. Here is an explanation of Modpack Monstrosity. The creator, aka, find name of the guy, conjugated around 800 modifications into Minecraft. Throwing together a nearly incomprehensible mix of technological, magical, exploratory, eatery, spacery, and gamondry modifications, leading to the biggest mod pack known to intelligent life forms within the local bubble. Shaming the so-called YouTubers who claim to play with all the mods. But having 800 modifications at once may have incalculable quantities of side effects, unprecedented bugs and glitches, and elephantine CPU and RAM usage requiring quadruple the amounts of RAM of the average personal computer. But it gets worse. Because that was simply loading the game. Actually playing it is a whole new level of phantasmagorical torment filled with lag and glitches caused by the never-ending flood of conflicting modifications. So I am going to play it anyways. Due to the limitations of current technology, I decided to allocate 8GB of RAM to Modpack Monstrosity about one third of the recommended amount. This somehow worked at the beginning, until Minecraft slowed below the speed of Hubble expansion. Until it perished due to a memory issue. So I have come to the unfortunate conclusion that Modpack Monstrosity is unplayable with my current specs. Luckily however, I have found a similar monstrosity, but with more reasonable PC requirements. Its name is Greedy Craft. Named after all the overly enthusiastic modification consumers, amounting to over 500 modifications adding nearly everything possibly conceivable into the game, with 2000 hours spent on making it work. This is not exactly surprising considering this was manufactured by the gaming addict known as T-Creo, who I remember from nearly three years ago for having the highest Wolf Slayer experience in the entire Hypixel Skyblock community. Nobody knew what he did after he quit. But here he is. Skyblock is truly escapable. Anyways that is enough t -O lore. I have decided to begin a playthrough of Greedy Craft to test the gaming limits of this gaming computer. The nightmare begins, after beginning the load. Luckily there was an eloquent loading screen and several useful tips to increase mental fortitude. Even though some of these tips were basically the credits, and controversial opinions on the internet. After being mindlessly entertained by random tips for 13 minutes, I was in. I was instantly harassed by millions of new buttons and fancy music. Upon seeing the settings, I was drowned out by hundreds of different controls to configure. Which included a drop key that was already unbinded. Which is a reference to how billions of dollars are lost by accidental dropping in high pixel. Upon expressing the desire to manufacture a new world, I was greeted by multitudinous world types ranging from normal to super tall skyscraper world and biospheres. But I didn't feel like it. This will be done in creative mode due to the trend of overly modded worlds breaking every 3 minutes, requiring admin assistance. What happened next was per sensory overload. I was instantly harassed by new notifications in each corner of the screen, and various new menus that documented every single aspect of my character, including skill points, skill investments, a high pixel skyblock style scoreboard, and oversimplified health and hunger bars. I was also robbed of first person mode. Only third person exists now. I was also born with a book that dumped several gigabytes of information at once, including the greedy craft lore which was actually clickbait. But to balance out all this overstimulation, there were relaxing natural noises. Optifine and the pre-installed shaders also somehow worked with all these mods. But in the end, all of this combined did not destroy the computer. The singular mod that turned my GPU into a volcano, was a modification that made things blurry whenever I opened my inventory. Which did far more destruction than the 500 mods with shaders. Anyways it is time to begin technological progress. After transporting myself across the terrain I couldn't help but notice that Steve looked possessed while sprint jumping. There were also various other random changes. The game had 50 different audio visual effects associated with pain. 
A 1.16 movement modification was dumped into this mod pack. Trees now refuse to provide free resources. And Terraria music was detected upon entering an area resembling a Terraria reference. Because not only was the creator of Skyblock and modification addict, he also injected Terraria Calamity music into the game. But even in these extremely bad conditions for carbon-based life forms, civilization was found. But was it really civilized? Upon passing by an individual contained in this unbottomless pit, boss music played for two seconds. I thought it was a false alarm. But it was a false false alarm because a real threat emerged onto the streets. A self-proclaimed hero of the village chased me out of his territory. And I somehow escaped. The health losses were catastrophic. But it could be reverse catastrophized since Steve could heal with no food. The real issue is that all these blur effects and shaders were about to initiate a nuclear reaction in the inner mechanisms of my computer. So I had to disarm them. And then I died to some thorns. Eventually I realized that keep inventory was automatically on due to me apparently being on adventure mode of greedy craft. After these seemingly random chain of events I decided to stop playing and start gaming. To do this I would need to do some research on what to do. Starting with this book I ignored. According to the book, the objectives of the game were found in a different book called the quest book. The main idea was I started out as a level 0 noob, visit all the dimensions, annihilate everyone and everything, and become better than everyone by getting everything. This includes over-the-top combinations of over-the-top conglomerations of biblical proportions of combinations conglomerations, and loot boxes. Every type of resource has its own chapter, ranging from starting the industrial revolution to becoming an edgy quote reposter magician, to get all our rarely conceived items imaginable. Information on how to do this is obtained by completing the first objectives, which rewards a book that has even more books inside. Anyways that concludes the gaming research. I was reading on top of this temporary pillar to avoid the protesters below. That was until a mysterious object was seen committing violent actions leading to my demise. Anyways it was time to accumulate sticks and stones and natural string to create an axe. But I accidentally confused these pine cones with rocks. Which was a good thing since I could eat them directly from the ground. In reality there was no limit to what could be harvested for personal gain. But Steve was reaching his breaking point. He refused to pick up any more objects beyond this point. And his back structure extended into the fourth dimension. This would not stop me from obtaining my industrialization tools however. Now it was time to transplant wood from reality into my inventory. Step 2. Constructing a headquarters to store all of these items. There were a variety of natural structures that I could inhabit, saving resources by not building from scratch. I looked at properties ranging from the marble fountain, the giant glass aquarium, the gaming computer themed mine shaft, and the pathetic volcano. All of which had various technology inside. At first I chose to build my base on top of the pathetic volcano. And then I abandoned it. Because since I was now slightly richer from the random structures, I decided I could take on the hero of the village. But as it turns out, the hero of the village was nowhere to be seen. And the rest of the villagers were now more realistic due to something called Minecraft. Not only could I demand them to do stuff, but they listened without hesitation. My game theory is that I replaced the hero of the village. Everyone else just went along with it as I tested the patience of the villagers by constantly making reasonable demands. But then the possible happened. The 89th random game feature kicked in and led to me spontaneously combusting. Analysis of the footage reveals that I had apparently stepped on a landmine. The same happened for the villagers, who simply shrugged it off. I needed to obtain their powers. But how? That was when I remembered something. I began flirting with the villagers for experimental purposes. Leading to being rejected ten times in a row. So it was time for plan cyanodiazotidine sulfosphoxide. I clicked this button and they agreed to follow me. This was cut short when I accidentally triggered an armed invasion of myself, leading to a prompt death. And as I journeyed towards the place of the incident, the villager who was following me warped through space-time to fulfill their sacred duty. Proving immense loyalty. 
That was when I had a realization. You may have remembered the thorns that circumjacented the everywhere and here. These could not only be used against me, but also be used against those against me. But their biggest leftover upon death, was nothing. So poking them to death was rather pointless. Anyways after returning to the village I realized there were more than just NPCs to flirt with. The village also had NPCs whose only personality trait was having tofu. There was also expensive machinery left out in the middle of the streets. And a sign proclaiming that I was now in Rifila Lake. So all of these Rifalalguins were apparently tofu worshippers, with an entire house built out of tofu blocks, and storages filled to the brim with tools made from tofu, which were more efficient than wooden tools. I decided this was far better than the old base at the pathetic volcano. Meaning this was my new base. The items from my rampage of picking items up were now stored in this chest. Allowing me to borrow items from even more places. This included borrowing the world record for largest naturally spawning smeltery. This also included borrowing all of these necessary societal resources including stone bricks and square paprisus, which the villagers kept out in the open. But all of this gaming was making me hungry. So I conveniently stumbled upon a rustic Minecraft themed restaurant, with free food apparently. After that it seems I have visited all the tourist destinations in this tofu town. So I bade farewell to the Rifalalaguins by communicating to them in their sleep. Also I forgot that I dumped a bunch of important stuff in the tofu stuff, which I did not realize at that time. I was on my own. The real world contained many other structures with unknown valuables. And by using the starting objects from the village, I will fight bigger enemies for even better objects. This was truly society. And already I found a worthy opponent. Leading into an epic three-dimensional third-person cinematic IMAX 4K mob fight. I emerged victorious. Or did I? Because next to me was a fake grass trap that dumped me into an anthropogenically made pit. But inside this very pit, was a random chest with even more random valuables. I was more than happy to accept gold and shield donations. But the higher program being struck me down by saying I was not skilled enough to put a piece of wood in my hand and a piece of gold on my head. So this was the biggest clickbait of the century, beating click from the 2006 film. And this zombie encounter would be nothing, when compared to the giant generic tower of challenge. Theoretically I could simply build to the top to skip the challenge part of the challenge tower. But it was not even a challenge in the first place because my tofu sword sliced through all organic matter like hydrofluoric acid. The strategy is to jump, and left click. But this strategy would fail on the second floor when spiders began phasing through the ceilings and attacking. My ability to fight back was controverted by the fact that I was stuck in third person mode with no option causing me to accidentally defenestrate myself, ending the tower run. But I was leaving out one important detail. I had set my spawn in this random tent that spawned near the tower, before invading the tower. And I could conveniently try once again. That was until I was attacked by a magician guy Lance the Merciless Lively Cinder 2 Star. Holding a green frying pan and pink lunch tray. He absolutely destroyed me with his homing orange fruits. I was losing all mental sanity from the chaos of greedy craft. I had to exit now before it was too late. I exited. These past few hours have been absolutely nonsensical. And all I had to do was take that and multiply it by a few hundred to master all of the major mods and reach the final goals of greedy craft. Perhaps it was impossible. I will be retiring from greedy craft. Remember to like subscribe ring notification bell and comment and like so I can reach 400,000 subscriptions. And shout out to the members who joined before memberships got disabled. And watch other thingies.